Hey, Matt, uh, Elliot, she's my younger of the two girls. and uh, Yeah, you're nine-year-old. She is kind of cray-cray. Um, <laughs> and I think it's a typical number two child, but she's the reason we don't have a number three child. <laughs> we tell her that a lot. Birth control. Birth control. Yes. Thanks, Elliot. Thanks, Elliot. So uh, <laughs> she told me that she can do something really cool the other day while we were driving. And I said, oh, yeah, what's that? And she said, I can turn off the radio in the car with my butt. Wow. Okay. Right. So I'm, I'm concentrating on driving. I'm trying to be engaged with this conversation with my child. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, all I can think of is like, please let her say, not her naked butt. <laughs> like, I just don't want little butt uh -huh. cheeks on my radio. You don't. Okay. I don't. So. Oh, man. I go, okay, Elliot, go on. And she told me that the other day when I was at the gas station and the girls were in the car and I ran in to uh, grab something. She figured out that if she unbuckled, obviously, right. if she uh, unbuckled and uh, kind of maneuvered herself, she could turn off the car with or turn off the radio with her butt. Turning off the car would be way more impressive. Yeah. But she could just turn off the radio and she could turn it back on. Wow. Both ways. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So I have an older car with the big dial in the middle right. with a button. So I figured that's how she, you know, makes it happen. Yeah, same way with my car. I'm, I think I could probably, I might be able to turn off that style radio with my butt too. I haven't tried though. I mean, what goes through her brain that says, I wonder if I can turn off the radio with my butt. So it was actually like an intentional thing. I thought maybe she oh, like, yeah. got out no. of her seatbelt and was like trying to get something from like the back seat or something like turned around like, oh, look at that. Huh, no, how convenient. she was actually like, I wonder if I can hit that power yeah. button with my with my buttock. Yep. Turns out she can. Turns out she can. She clarified that, yes, she had her pants on. And <laughs> yeah. she said, why pants. would I have my pants off in the car? And I said, I don't know, but I'm just making sure it wasn't butt cheeks on the right. dial. Because I know you, Elliot, and I know that there was a chance. Exactly. Exactly. So. Uh. New new talent for Elliot. Isn't that great? You must be very proud. Must be very proud of your nine-year-old. I mean, can you put that on your resume someday? Probably. I mean, if it, if it was a touch screen, it'd be pretty impressive, right? Yeah, but, yeah. It's d difficult to... Well, I'm still a big fan of buttons and knobs. I want buttons and knobs, especially in my car. That way I can reach and feel without taking my eyes off the road. And then you see like a Tesla or something that's got a... Big old widescreen display in the front seat that you're supposed to supposed to. Hit. I like buttons; they're gratifying too. Click, click, you know, wicka wicka. <laughs> no, I'm with you. Except for I just had to dig a button out of the console, and that was really annoying because you turn on the car and it would change the radio preset immediately because the button was stuck. Oh, so I watched a YouTube, figured out how to pop the button. Wow, and now it's unstuck. But you still like if you touch it, it's going to get stuck again. But I know how to fix it now. So, yeah, can highly recommend uh, with Kate here that uh, YouTube is a great way to learn how to do things. And it's mm -hmm. shocking, like how many people have like, well, I guess did you type in actually the make and model of your car or what did you type into YouTube? Uh, uh, I think, yeah, I think I put 2011 Chevy Traverse radio button <laughs> stuck stuck yeah so i had to change the brake light in my car recently mm -hmm. and uh same thing it's like 2011 toyota corolla brake light replacement and then i scrolled through a couple i was like let me find the shortest one and then there it was oh that's what i needed good old youtube there it was i was at the library yesterday and we were going to the car with our handfuls of books and we're kind of stumbling to get to the car, but I, I was able to unlock the car, you know, with the, with the fob. Right. Your, your hands are kind of occupied. Your, your arms are occupied. So you had to maneuver to get the keys into your hand. Yes. Okay. To unlock it. So right. this woman passing us was like, how do you like your car? 
And I looked at her funny and she's like, isn't that your BMW? I'm like, no, my, <laughs> mine is not the BMW. Right. She goes, oh, yours is the old one. I'm like, yes. Womp womp. Mine is the old one. Thanks, lady. Thanks for thinking we were Beamer people. <laughs> if she would, if she would ask about your car, your ancient car, which you've talked about, uh, I know upgrading recently, like a trade in, get a different car kind of situation, right? Was that how right. you probably do it? Yeah. Um, if she was talking about your car, you could have said, "Uh, yeah, you want it? You want to buy? You want to buy this?" Runs like a dream. Yeah. Her name's Black Beauty, and uh, <laughs> Black Beauty. Black Beauty, the newest want want on Black Beauty is the rear windshield wiper. Doesn't work. Oh. Huh. Previously, the uh, one of the windows didn't roll down, right? The driver's side window? The No, the passenger. Passenger side window. Uh-huh. Wouldn't roll down. And then... No, they'd always roll down. No, no, no. The windows would always roll down. They just oh. wouldn't roll back up. <laughs> so Monty had to put in switches. So now they roll down and up. Yeah, if I had to choose a mode, I think I'd rather be permanently in the up position. Mm-hmm, Not very mm-hmm. fun driving on the highway with a window all the way down, especially if it starts raining. Especially. Yep. And the traction control right now is not working. Oh, so. yeah, that's right. That's a key feature also. I forgot about that. That's that's a big one. That's the big one. Now, do you yeah. use the traction control? Yes, that's something that you use and probably, you've probably seen it kick in in the past. Right. Right, as have I in my car. Usually in like cooler weather and, you know, um, colder roads and right yeah meanwhile the uh the back window wiper i've never quite understood the need for unless there's like snow pack on there or something you can easily just go whick and there it goes can you uh right but if your car is dirty you can use your windshield wiper fluid and clean your window with the back wiper yeah when it's raining you want the back window wiper do i hmm I think you do, Matt. Well, I've never had one. Yeah, but have you ever had a larger vehicle like that? No, you think it's more important okay. on a larger vehicle? I think the shape of the car is probably important. Like, your car probably slopes more. Right. So it's going down, where That's mine is point. more, like, straight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's, especially if you get some mud or salt or something like that on there. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I figured there was probably... I figured you'd probably advocate for it and not say, oh, yeah, it's yeah. pointless. Get it out of here. But It's not just a cosmetic look. It does things. It does things, yeah. Learning about windshield wipers like we do on Matt and Kate. It's just another thing. Old black beauty falling apart. You guys make any progress in finding a new car? No. No? Okay. No. Are you doing research? Are you doing anything like that? Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah. I'm not the research type. Monty's the research type. I'm the, ooh, <laughs> okay. that looks sharp. Oh, all right. Yeah, you've got the taste. Yeah. And he's got the uh, the know-how. Right. To figure out, is this car going to get the job done despite its pretty looks? Exactly. All right. Uh, and do you get the impression that you guys will uh, secure a new car? In the Because I know you said you're not doing the research or anything, but you get the feeling you'll secure a new car? Before the end of the year? Or? I Probably not before the end of the year. Okay. Probably not. Because he was talking about fixing the traction control, and I'm just like, oh, God, I don't want to fix anything else. How much does it cost <laughs> to fix the tra- traction control? I don't know. Yeah. But I can't see it being something like, oh, that's a $20 fix. <laughs> yeah, probably not. No. Nope. Yeah. So there's that. And Monty's really handy about fixing vehicles and... And doing things, but uh, I think this one's out of his reach. Above his pay grade? Yep. Mm. Yep, and it's, uh, you know, cars have been, like a lot of car lots have been fairly barren, you know? Mm -hmm. Have you even done like the Sunday move of going out and scoping the otherwise empty parking lot? Okay. No. No. All right. No. We got stuff to do on Sundays, like sit on the couch. And eat popcorn. Well, you go to church, right? We go to church on Saturdays usually, yeah. Okay. Uh, Got to watch some Chiefs football. Yep. Sunday's a popcorn day in your house, huh? Well, I mean, snacks in okay. general. Not doing anything. Not going anywhere. I do like a lazy Sunday. 
Right. Saturday's still my favorite date. So. Okay. Are you going to start getting out of the house more? Ha! Huh. Am I? Hmm. Why do you ask? Well, you said you were... I don't know if you used the word concerned. I doubt you used the word concerned, but... I don't think so. Yeah. You only left the house, like, once? Yeah, I think I had I told you that I left the house once over the weekend, and that was to... I walked to brunch. There's a good brunch spot that's, like, five minutes from my place. Uh, and yeah, it's a nice walk there. So that's what I did. That was the extent of me leaving my house. I think I hung out on the deck for a little bit, but generally, yeah, yeah, I don't do much. Nope. Okay. You know, we're getting to that time of the year where, you know, things get busy and are you going to be busy or are you going to be like, nope, sorry, staying home? Well, unfortunately, I'm saying this all into the radio, but... I think I might be, quote, busy for a lot of things that I get, yeah. <laughs> that I get invited to. Uh, but I think the biggest thing that lends to my lack of, well, life isn't the word, but lack of doing things, lack of social activities, I'm just waiting on my friend's kids to turn 18 and get out of their houses. It seems like so much of people's lives, and you can probably attest to this, get utterly consumed by their children. True. Um, I will say as a adult with children, mm-hmm. I do appreciate my friends pulling me out of the house. So maybe they're waiting on you to invite them to something not related to their children. Oh, I try to do invites. I feel like I'm the, the leader of the, there's six, six of us in this Slack group, mm-hmm. uh, basically mm-hmm. best friends from high school. And I try, I, I float invites often. I'm trying to, but okay. I guess, do I need to pony up like an actual, like a theme to the party or something? Like, hey, we're celebrating such and such. We're doing it on this date instead of being like, hey, we need to get another hang on the calendar. Yes. You, know? you have to, you have to come out with the date. Saying we need to put something on the calendar is not enough. You have to say, hey, this Saturday or, Gosh, not this Saturday. Or yeah, say like November 15th, my place. Yes. Something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think that's really helpful because then people can be like, well, when you say we need to put something on the calendar, well, we've got this on this day and this on this day and this on this day and blah, 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 blah. They're like, oh, November 15th, we don't have anything. Put it on the calendar. Good idea. We're coming. All right. Yeah, because I do think your friends with children would appreciate you pulling them out of their family and bringing them back to who they were before kids yeah yeah and we all kind of snap right back into that immature place getting back together with my high school friends yes which is healthy good tips kate anytime hey kate do you have a record player do you have a vinyl player you do that your house no okay no I have one. I used it hardly at all before. I was like, this is like the most inefficient way to listen to music. I get it, though. I understand. You know, it's uh, I think a lot of people call it. And I think I've mentioned this phrase to you before on this show, like a tea ceremony. You know, it's like going through the steps of grabbing the record, taking it out of its uh, holder, whatever the hell that's called. Um, And then like the paper noise that you get and then putting it on the deal, moving the needle and setting it. I get it. I understand why so many people are into that. And then collecting vinyl, you know, it's like a nice way to get collector's items since people are buying fewer and fewer CDs each year. More people are buying vinyl. So do you think people are doing records because of the movements versus the sound quality? Because are records supposed to be like really good sound quality? That's what a lot of the enthusiasts in the uh, in that field, vinyl collectors, whatever, a lot of them will tell you that. But in actuality, you're still like CD quality is still far better than what a record will do. And it doesn't wear like a record does. I just I love music, Matt. Love music. I do, too. It's part of the reasons why we work on a music radio station, probably. But that's too much work. Doing all that record stuff. Yes. Too much work when you can just play it. A lot of these records come with, like, they're like, we know, we understand, here is the MP3. Like, here is what you do to own the MP3. So you have a, because it's a, well, first off, it's harder and harder to actually rip a CD into your computer. 
And uh, to do it on vinyl is especially trying. Like, how are you going to get that into your computer? And then get, get it onto your phone or whatever. Right. But basically, it still gives you the collector's item of the record. Okay. You know? Okay. Now, here's something interesting. So they've had a difficult time, just like with a lot of things, a lot of, uh, a lot of manufacturing. Mm-hmm. They are having a very difficult time releasing the, and pretty much it doesn't happen, releasing the vinyl the same date that the digital slash CD comes out. Okay. And so a couple of times now, like both Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo's uh, albums within the past year, hit number one pretty much immediately, right? Especially like you do right. with Taylor Swift. And then a couple of months later, hit number one again because of the vinyl. Because they released the vinyl and then collectors bought them up. Hmm. Pretty interesting little side effect of an album being number one for a long time, going away for a while. And then months later, here it comes. It's number one again. Here it is again. So, talking records and the appeal of vinyl, right? Which, once again, I get you get a big album art that you can put up on a shelf or something, too. Like, there's all kinds of different ways that you can do this. And then I saw this story from the wire cutter. Don't call it a comeback. Cassettes have sounded lousy for years and still do. <laughs> and this story is about uh, the same thing as happening to cassettes as vinyl, where people are like, oh, this is cool. This is retro. This is old school. Let's buy cassettes oh no does that mean blank cassettes are coming back and mixtapes are coming back oh wouldn't that be great yeah however what they say is they just can't produce the the demand is not there for them to be able to produce cassette decks like they used to let me ask you this Mm -hmm. do you have a cassette player in your house with all of your techie gadgets i do yeah i have more than more i have a Dual cassette deck, and I've got like a more handheld portable one. It's meant for uh, voice memos and things like that. Yeah, I still have those around. Oh, look at you. Yeah, well, I still have like a couple of grocery bags, maybe three. I have a lot of cassettes from when I first got into radio, you know, of my my shows. And I've thought for a long time, like, I should digitize those. And uh, if you thought I was bad now, you should have heard me back then, you know. (laughs) I thought you were saying that you had bags full of cassettes that you stole from the radio station. No, these, well, <laughs> actually kind of because they were the radio station's cassettes that I recorded the show onto. Right. And then eventually took home. But they're not like. No, I didn't steal the radio stations like rock sets or Michael Bolton right. cassettes or anything like that. No, I don't know if I've seen an album on cassette in my time in radio. Which okay. began in 2000, 2000, 2001. So, I don't know. Now, saying that the cassette decks are difficult to manufacture, one might think, like, are turntables that much easier? And turns out, yes, they are. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and uh, for the unfamiliar, if you're in the car with your mom right now or whatever, and you're like, what's he talking about? What's this cassette situation? What the hell is going on? <laughs> oh, man. How... I don't know. How do you explain a cassette, Kate? Uh, you you want to take a crack at it? It's a rectangle. It's got two little things that you can wind up. and mm-hmm. Yeah. And basically, there's a bunch of tape in there. It's not adhesive tape. It actually is the songs encoded on a piece of like, it's like magnetic tape, right? I think that's right. Right. And, and you like... Could potentially, like, if you end up buying a used cassette player or something, and then there you are playing your stuff, it could very well eat your cassette. So your music could be destroyed by the player you put it in. Never happened to you? All the time. Did it really? It did. And then you had to bust out the pencil and stick it in the little holes and wind it back up. And, right. Yep. And then you yeah, hope you don't tear it. and Or maybe mm-hmm. your obnoxious little brother or something strings it all out just to be a jerk. Were you that brother? No, no. Okay. My brothers didn't do that. It's a horrible thing. No, but if it was kind of bent, when you got it back on there, when you'd go to replay the tape, it'd be like, (laughs) when it was bent. Yeah. Yeah. So, because that's not a good technology. In fact, it was kind of a step back, you know, from from vinyl, because the audio quality on vinyl is better than cassette. Like, even like you leave your cassette in your car, the heat's going to hurt it and all that. Mm. But, um, 
Anyway, this is all to say that apparently cassettes are making a comeback. I knew some artists were releasing them, but I thought that was just a ha ha ha. I mean, don't you think that's crazy? I feel like people have more record players than people have cassette players. Yes, I believe you're correct. I believe that is the case, which has been illustrated by the fact that vinyl has outsold CDs for a few years now. I forget how many years. It's been a while. Oh, wow. And cause I've never seen cassettes on those kind of charts. You know, like CD, vinyl, and digital downloads. And then it's like, maybe there's a sliver in there that's cassettes. I don't know. But didn't um, it just used to be album sales? Like one top, like one, even when there were eight tracks, even when there were vinyl, even when there were cassette cassette tapes, didn't it just used to be how many times that album was purchased? To make up that, like a chart like that? Yeah. Well, yeah, they're, so they're basically saying like, okay, here's the record industry and here's all the money that came into the record industry. This percent was CDs. This percent was vinyl. This percent was digital, basically okay. of all the, of, of that entire pool. Does that answer your question? Or would- yeah, it wasn't like, hey, last week we were number one in vinyl. This week we're number one in cassettes. It was just like, oh, hey, this week we have a number one selling album. Yes, you're correct. That would yeah, so like okay. if you have a number one selling album, that's going to be across CD uh, streams. Also, can uh, there's like equivalent album sales by number yeah. of streams, and then digital downloads. Uh, did I already say vinyl this time around? Vinyl, and then I guess cassette. And so it would be like all those together make you uh, give you a number one album. It doesn't matter what kind of mix, just units sold, basically. Yeah. Gotcha. So this article says if you must. <laughs> buy a cassette once again the headline is don't call it a comeback cassettes have sounded lousy for years and still do their recommendation is to go go basically go to ebay buy a used one it's just crazy talk yeah it's pretty uh pretty wild i mean we have a, a stereo in our garage that we've had Ooh, i think i had it in college and it's got uh, a three disc changer and a double cassette fancy and my girls are like what are those i'm like oh it's a cassette tape don't worry about it wow (laughs) yeah they wouldn't know anything about a cassette tape or a player yeah the i guess the nicest thing about the cassette was as you mentioned earlier it was the only way it was like the first way to make a mixtape and there was a long gap between the cassettes popularity and mixed tape ability and CDs being able to do the same thing. It took a, a minute before you could do that at home, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's the one redeeming quality for me of cassettes. Legally, right? Legally? Legally. Because when, like, what was it, Napster? Or- yeah, I think that was still after, like, because people were still, like, LimeWire. The, the main technology they needed was to rip into the computer. Yeah. So I think you could make them, I'm fairly certain you could make a mixtape on CD before. Napster came around. Ah. But, uh, but yeah, Napster sure helped make a ton of uh, mixtape CDs. Mixtape CDs. Good old mixtapes. Did you ever uh, record off of the radio? I did. Record music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. I remember recording specifically Every Rose Has Its Thorn by Poison. Oh. <laughs> that dorky. Oh. Okay, Saturday nights, there was a syndicated oldies show that I liked. Oh, okay. And I would record oldies off the radio. I dig that. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, my brother and I would write commercials. Wow. Did you consider a career in radio? Uh, I wanted to go on sports broadcasting. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Hey, once upon a time, I thought it'd be cool to be like a play-by-play guy. Yeah. Yeah, be kind of fun. I even got to shadow a morning show in eighth grade. And look at me now, Matt. Yep, hosting one. Ooh, yeah, ooh. Dreams do come true, Kate. They do. Yep. Not as many canvas bags of money with dollar bill signs on the outside of them, but uh, absolutely not. Good enough. Yeah, good enough. We eat. Kate's children eat. I mean, I kind of thought there'd be more freebies at the radio station, but okay. <laughs> oh, yeah? Really? I did. I just thought that everything they talked about on the air, like, it was kind of, what do they call it? The payola or whatever? I, oh, yeah. I thought that, yeah. You thought they were getting paid constantly for the 
the things they were yeah. talking about. Yeah. As much as Matt and I talk about McDonald's, you'd think that we had <laughs> right. stock in McDonald's or that our kids get free McDonald's every day. Nope. Nope. Mm-mm. They are an advertiser, but that's not necessarily why we talk about them. Just inevitably it comes up like, oh, Egg McMuffin, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, yeah, payola is when someone who works in radio or broadcasting is taking money for something and it's not disclosed to you that they're taking money for that. That's illegal. And I guess the initial payola thing was, or plugola, that's plugola because you're plugging a product. Payola was you're taking money, like, hey, give me $1,000 cash and I'll play your song, that kind of thing. Yeah. But um, I can say that, uh, well, actually, I can't speak for Kate, but uh, I've never accepted Payola or Plugola. Kate. <laughs> Silence. I know, you weren't <laughs> going to speak for me. I didn't. I know. Okay. So I get paid, Matt. Kate's getting paid <laughs> over here. Yeah, watch out. Oh, geez. Just kidding. There was a just kidding in there. Right? Kind of. Kind of. All right. <laughs> Police, open up. Right. Oh, Kate just dove out the window. She's now Mount. running on the side of I-29. Man, she really moves quick to get down there that quick. Tuck and roll. <laughs> yeah. We do have a, a lovely hill. We have the perfect hill for sledding if, if it didn't put you in front of a semi-truck on I-29. If, if, right. If only, if only. If only they shut down I-29. Well, sometimes it happens. On a snowy day. Typically due to like a deadly car accident. So we're not going to wish that to happen. But if it does. No. We really do need to invest in a radio station sled. Yeah, maybe sledding then is not the appropriate time either. So. Because you're not being respectful. Right. Mm. Okay. So uh, we, we can't really recommend sledding, slaying toward a highway. Public service announcement from Matt and Kate. Cannot recommend. I know that we were talking about sledding, but when you said slaying, Mm -hmm. I was not thinking of sleigh bells and sleighs. (laughs) Murdering, right? Right. Yeah. Like, nope, we definitely didn't think we needed to say that either, Matt. But yep, we don't recommend slaying. We're so close to Halloween. Right. Hello. There. Yeah, can you do that voice only like uh, not hello? Like, can you have like a a conversation with Kate? Yes. Using a ghoul voice. Yeah. Probably. It's based on Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars, from the Star Wars films. You familiar? No. You're not familiar with the Emperor? No. Oh, okay. Does it hurt your throat? I wouldn't be able to sustain it for very long, I don't think. Okay. It sounds painful. Yeah. Now, when you say hello, it doesn't. But when you're like, hello, having a conversation. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long I'd be able to maintain this voice. Well done. Not very. Not very. <laughs> long enough to voice a 30 second ad for a strip club that, they, re- that they rejected and that Kate ended up voicing instead, as previously discussed on Matt and Kate. Gosh, how many years ago was that? I think it was five years ago. You want me to search for it again? No. Okay. No. Is that place still open? The outskirts. I think so. Okay. The outskirts. I couldn't stop myself. I had our pro- I had V Creative, which is our production system open. Um, it ran October twenty eighth through the thirty first of twenty nineteen. Oh gosh. It's a lot sooner than I remembered it. I know. I wish it was a lot older. So that you could justify you not remembering that you did this. Uh, that you- and that. And it, of course, like accepting terrible production. Right. For anyone who missed it. Here you go. Hang on to your masks, boys, because Halloween is about to get hot. Join- all right. That's all we really need. I mean, when they mean masks, they don't mean covid masks they mean your halloween mask so they could replay it this year <laughs> uh, well i'm not sure if they have the hot pepper eating contest again or not right so, so right yeah yeah 
Oh my gosh. Should have gone with the spooky voice. I agree. The client was like, they want less spooky and more sexy lady voice on there. And Kate goes, me, 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 me. Uh, that's what happens when you work in a company with a ton of dudes. And you're one of four women who do commercials. Right. Uh, whether you fit the demographic or not, you get that commercial. Yeah. I'm not trying to imply anything by saying this, but... Before I just was like, uh, I'm not uh, assigning this to uh, a woman in our company. I'm going to do this myself in a, in a spooky voice. Before I was like, yeah, Kate's probably the one to send this to. Nope, no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. But two years ago, Kate should have been like, I'm not doing a sexy voice for a strip club Halloween. <laughs> now. Five years ago, Kate was like, I love doing commercials. Sure, I'll do it. Right. I'll go to the strip club with you with a boombox to play them the commercial. Wicka, 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 said Kate. Yeah. Um, that was more like 10, 12 years ago, Kate. <laughs> 10, 12 years ago, Kate would go to a yeah. client and bring a boombox with her and play the client their commercial? Uh, strip club. If that's the client you're referring to. Oh. Definitely pre-children. But Boombox at a client? Sure, why not? You uh, uh, at a non-strip club client? Yeah. Okay. You ever do a remote broadcast at a strip club? No. Yeah, I, I had to at least once, if not twice, in Lawrence when I worked there. Yeah. They have a breakfast buffet? It was very bizarre. I didn't go in. I stayed outside. I was too scared of the naked ladies. <laughs> Half naked, half naked. Uh, it wasn't the outhouse. So not at the outhouse? Not at the outhouse, no. Did they want you to go in? No, and I really shouldn't. They do. I mean, yeah. you don't want to leave your broadcast equipment just sitting there for anyone to pilfer right. anyway. So No, they weren't like, hey, come on in and meet, meet the staff. No, nothing like that. <laughs> meet the staff. <laughs> yeah, meet the staff. They're fun. Oh, my gosh. I would think that would be a remote where it's better to be on the outside so you could welcome people inside. Yes. I mean, all, honestly, I think that's the way to do all remote broadcasts is hang out by the van. That way you can greet people on their on the way in. You don't miss them. Don't miss a person that way. There you go. Don't miss a single strip club patron that way. Nope. So no breakfast buffet? As far as I know, no breakfast buffet. Well, okay. I think maybe the Pink Flamingo or something had a, I think, the Flamingo. What do people call that? And, which another place I never went to. I think I heard about their buffet before. <laughs> but I can't speak to uh, the buffet at whatever the place was I was at that wasn't Flamingo or the outhouse, no. Okay. And none of these strip clubs have paid us for any of these mentions. Zero. As far as Kate? Nope. Okay. Legit, no. No. <laughs> 